What if we had the power to treat incurable diseases, create life, or entire alternative realities? In this series, we're taking you on a journey to explore the very limits of human technology. Take a fascinating tour around the world and meet the new pioneers in biotechnology, medicine and engineering. The people who, by merging science and design, push the boundaries of what's possible to change the world we live in. London. As the sun rises, the world's top innovators and designers get to work. With its population nearing 10 million people and with 233 languages spoken, London is the place where people, disciplines and investment converge. Out of this convergence, innovation is born. This has led to the biotechnology and life sciences sector growing by more than 9% year on year for the last five years, an all-time high. At the heart of the design district in London's Greenwich, the best visual designers in the world try to keep up with the rising demand for professional visuals in biotech and medicine. The Reciprocal Space Studio are one of the very few such companies in the world. Laser focused on science, but built on creativity. It's really exciting to work at the crossroads of science and design. So with the Science Meets Design series, we really wanted to bring some of that excitement to wider audiences. Innovation often starts with inspiration. For a fascinating material innovation company called Scaled, that inspiration is fish and reptiles. Scaled is decoding the way animals use scales as protection to build next generation protective wearables. We sat down with CEO of Scaled, Natalie Kerries, to talk about how design fuels her vision of the future Scaled is creating. There has been fascinating research about how animal scales are adopting to environmental challenges, as what kind of predator you're facing, what are the climate changes you're facing. And scales would, the geometry of scales of a fish would change in the evolution process accordingly. So I'm actually with Skilled copying nature's evolutionary approach to protection of animals. Basically reconstruct the nature's idea to apply scales to protect uh, humans, basically a species that have, has never experienced scales as a, as a protection mechanism. So I would refer to nature-inspired design um, as biomimicry. So you do have a real-world problem we're trying to solve and the approach to look into nature to find parallels, um, parallel problems in nature and analyze how nature has solved them. And there are many examples we find in, in our world now from um, Velcro or um, the Shinkansen, the fastest train in Japan, how they shaped um, the front part. That's just how nature was the most efficient um, designer of, of our world. 
The term biomimicry literally means imitation of the living. Humans have always been inspired by the natural world that surrounds them. But how is biomimicry different from, say, painting a landscape? At the root level, biomimicry is literally bio, as in biology, mimicry to imitate. So you're imitating the way that nature functions. And function is a really key word here because if you're just looking at, let's say, a design that is shaped like a tree, but it doesn't have any of the functional properties of the flow of the fluid inside or the way that it's able to resist wind and pressure from storms, for example, that's not really biomimicry. Biomimicry is the functional emulation and intentional design. It's really just comes down to how do we ask the right kinds of questions and look to the natural world for some of these solutions. And biomimicry offers that kind of pathway to come to these different kinds of really creative ideas that are inspiring and hopeful and that quite frankly give me all the energy I need to keep going and working toward not just mitigating climate change but being able to better adapt as a species. But how far can we go in imitating nature and its designs? The answer may lie with a design prodigy, Jun Kamei and his company Amphibio who are working on developing an artificial gill. The target? Enable humans to breathe underwater when the sea level rise eventually engulfs many coastline urban areas. In 50 to 100 years, most of the big cities situated near the water will be semi-submerged. So you ha had the choice of relocating to a place which is dry or people deciding to stay in those cities and having to deal with a semi-submerged environment. And, uh, and I was quite curious, you know, if we could use that future scenario to rethink about our lifestyle. So we, we don't really spend time on the water as part of our daily life, but what if we could? Um... So the way our artificial geotechnology technology work is, it has a membrane which is waterproof but also gas permeable so when you have that membrane uh, which separates let's say seawater and then your your air container um, gases can go through the membrane but not water and by having that system whenever you consume oxygen in your air container um, the level of uh, oxygen in that container goes down but you have a plenty of oxygen outside so the oxygen molecule would travel from water into the container through the membrane. We want to go away from the bulky and heavy and metallic um, products that you often find in scuba but making it more organic so soft, flexible, more like a garment and then something that is light. And we use a lot of reference from uh, what you find in nature. Um, the, the shapes of like corals or the shapes of like sponges or of like the gill in fish as a way to understand how we could potentially translate those design languages into a product to kind of convey, you know, the story. The Reciprocal Space team took a plane to the United States about to witness biomimicry when applied on a big scale. Chicago, known for its experimentation with architecture, holds some of the biggest treasures of biomimicry in the world. The Aqua Tower in downtown Chicago is one of the prime examples of bio-inspired designs in architecture. Its undulating facade of concrete slabs provides an illusion of water poles and creates unique properties for sun and wind protection. this industry because it's really like it's how we we build it's how we make our cities this is our civilization we're talking about here from a grand perspective you could look at the metaphor of what would it look like if our buildings function like trees and our cities function like ecosystems we headed to boston for the device and robotic summit
robots not only rock and roll but also twist, grab and build. And the dog-inspired robot called Spot, developed and manufactured by Boston Dynamics, has a knack for dancing. Although most of the time he's busy monitoring construction sites and inspecting environments dangerous for humans. Design allows you to differentiate you know, from what is existing and then making a statement that this is a totally different concept, different technology, different way where we can experience the underworld world. I believe that the most groundbreaking technologies won't have an impact if people don't use them. And that's why we need design to understand how we interact with our users and the challenges of our users to actually use this technology to have an impact.